Yeah, man, what's up, man? This is episode one on one sports state of mind. I am your host, Snipes KB, with the one and only Tebow. What's good, bro? What's going on, man? Coming coming to y'all live from the UMD parking garage, man. So y'all hear some cars and some rumbling. <laughs> don't, 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 don't trip out. <laughs> Well, uh, one thing I could definitely say, the lighting is definitely perfect, though. So so we good on that. <laughs> all right, man. So on since you're watching on YouTube, you will find all of our information on the bottom of the screen, on the side, anywhere around here to follow myself and Tebow and this podcast. If all right, listening. man. So let's go ahead. Let's just let's just go right into this. Um, since this is episode one on one, it is only right that we can name any athletes that have worn the number one this one should be a good one because there are hella athletes that have worn the number one who has killed in whatever sports that they have played in tebow would you like to go first uh yeah first up let me go my man penny hardaway real quick mm-hmm. speaking of penny i want to get your thoughts on this real quick he said he could win in a versus battle with sneakers versus anybody no, nah. no, I don't think so neither. He he got he he up uh, there though. He definitely up there. I mean, up there as far as what like two shoes, three shoes. To be honest, it's, it's like, like two maybe. The color, like I feel like with shoes, the colorways you could switch it up too though. It don't it don't got to be the whole different model. You feel me? Because like you know he got whole so, the half cents, the pennies. You know, like he mm-hmm. the colorways that he was coming out with were crazy. So I don't know. I feel like he, he up there though. His catalog definitely up there. Okay. Um, but okay, I got Penny. Let me get my boy Jahan Dotson, Washington Commanders, first player to wear that. Um, Justin Fields, obviously, he was number one at uh, Chicago now with uh, Ohio State. I think he was number one in uh, Georgia too when he was there. Um, two, I got Chauncey Billups, Mr. Big Shot, uh, Chris yeah, Bosch with Miami. <laughs> And then I'm at Maryland, so I got I got to talk DJ Moore and Stephon Diggs, both oh, number yeah. one here That's at right. UMD. So, uh, oh, of course, got shot my man D Rose out. Of course, I'd I'd have got people would have got okay. on me if I didn't say D Rose, man. So I got to got to say D Rose, <laughs> youngest MVP ever. Bro, stop. Like, stop. <laughs> so I'm like, so like, all right, you I'm shake my like, nah, <laughs> Well, all right. Well, D Rose, you already took him off of my list. I got Allen Iverson when he played for the Detroit Pistons. That time, that was when he cut his hair. He was wearing number one. Rod Strickland um, wore number one for all his teams that he played for. Um, Sauce Gardner currently wears the number one for the New York Jets. Mike Vick also wore number one when he was with the New York Jets. Um, Cam Newton. Um, Mr. Superman himself, hopefully he can get a job, but he wore number one. Um, and Ozzie Smith, Hall of Famer that played for the San Diego Padres and the St. Louis Cardinals, wore number one. Mm-hmm. Also, James Harden, I forgot James Harden wore number one now. Yeah, James Harden, too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's 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 so many people that we miss. Uh, LaMelo Ball, T Mac, you know, it can just go on and on. Steve Francis, when he played for the uh, I believe when he played for the Knicks, I believe he wore number one. It it, you know, there's yeah, there's so many people, but you know, like we, there's just so many people. <laughs> it is, but yeah, that's Muggsy like, Bogues too. Muggsy Bogues, <laughs> oh yeah, he did win number one. Okay, good list, good list. All right, so next week, next episode number two, we gotta come, we gotta come out swinging. Uh oh yeah. I'm not too, yeah. All right, so moving on. Got the end of real quick NFL talk. Not much going on. Drafts in about th- two weeks now. Today's what, the 8th? Yeah, two weeks. 10th. Today's the 10th. About yeah. two weeks. Um, OBJ just signed with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Coming down to the Avenue <sighs> for eight, 18 million, 15 guaranteed. What do what you think about that, man? I'm, I mean, honestly, when you think about a team that Lamar Jacks, I mean, that Odell Beckham can actually go to to actually be the team's number one receiver. I mean, the Ravens seem to be that team when you really think about it. Like Bateman really goes down to the position that he should be their number two. And he got Mark Andrews over there. As of right now, Lamar Jackson is not signed with them. But I think 
I think uh, Lamar is going to be signing with them pretty soon. So as far as a fit for Odell, I feel like that's a perfect fit. But um, at the end of the day, paying him 18 mil, like ah, 15 that's kind guaranteed of for a, yeah, 15 guaranteed for a receiver. I mean, he, he killed towards the end with the Rams, but, you know, he's been out, he's coming back. And I don't know. I just have to see it now. Of course, it definitely is, you know, but a prove it deal. But I like to see, man. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it can work out because I want it to work out. But well, see, I want my. I like. I like Odell out here. I hope. I hope they keep Lamar out here just for the area. Like Lamar, I like Lamar. Have I'm not a. Ra- I'm. I support the Ravens. I'm not a Ravens fan, but I hope it do keep Lamar here. But I was reading something. That they made a good point. It was like the the franchise tag that they put on Lamar, they can literally just easily match any team's offer. So that's why they're not really pressed to give him a number right now, because he's not. I don't think he's leaving. When they said that, I was like, oh, he's not leaving Baltimore because whatever team, whatever number another team gives him, Baltimore will match that regardless. I think yeah. so. I think they just don't want to be that team to make that first move. You know what I mean? So I think that yeah. that's gonna be good. Yeah. That's a good move for them. Yeah, so so if uh, the Ravens happen to not want, want to match it, that's when the other team would give two first-round picks. But hopefully – I don't know, man, because when you think about the Ravens now, because their defense is definitely stout, now they finally have a number one receiver, depending if Odell can stay healthy. And, I mean, Odell is pretty much just going to be running slants because that's what Lamar can throw on the money, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> I mean, short passes, and, and, and I mean, we'll just have to see, but I don't know, man. All right, man, so getting back to this NBA, last regular season game yesterday, we had there was, there was a couple of eventful things that happened yesterday, man. First, the day before that, Kyrie and Lucas sat out a meaningful game for them to make the playoffs. I think Kyrie sat out, yeah. Luka played, what, the first quarter, sat out the last three? Uh, that's not... The, the, what you think about that? You think he? What do you think Lucas should do now? Have, like that? That's like a clear sign of tanking to me. I I don't think there's been a clearer sign of tanking since the Philadelphia 76ers tried to get Ben Simmons that those couple of years because they were losing True. big game. I look at it this way: even though that was clearly tanking when it came down to the Dallas Mavericks, just like. Yesterday, it was the last game. There were a lot of teams that weren't playing their best players. I mean, you can kind of go on that too. But, um, you know, but for the Mavs, for not really playing Luka in a game and wish that if they could have won, they still w- exactly. would have been alive. I mean, but yeah, yeah, that's 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 not cool. But, um, you know, this is coming from a coach. Remember when Jason Kidd, uh, <laughs> he had to drink in I his head, you, you know, so, so – Hit me, hit me. So that shit doesn't really, you know, you know, like that shit doesn't really surprise me because one thing I do know that I heard too, if the Mavericks pick were to be in the top ten, they would keep their pick from when they traded for Kristaps Porzingis, mm. uh, Kristaps uh, Porzingis, when they traded for him a couple of years ago. So they this this year's pick is protected. So if they get in the top ten they get to keep their pick. If it's outside of the top 10, they don't. But just to answer your question, yeah, that I don't think that was cool. Not at all. Not at all. So what do you think Lucas should do? You think they should request a trade? Like no. with Kyrie, they get no, Kyrie. No, no, no. I only, only, I only say Lucas should not request a trade just based off the fact that he has an owner that's going to get him whoever he wants, mm-hmm. regardless. This isn't the type of owner that's just being cheap. Like he will – go over the cap just to get him what he wants. It's just, you know, these pieces that they have weren't really good. I hear that uh, a Christian Woods, I hear, I heard that they're just going to let him walk. Um, Kyrie, you know, that's kind of a skeptical situation. I, I hope that Kyrie. He didn't do his exit meeting neither. I hope that Kyrie. Yeah. I hope he actually stays, but you just don't know, you know, like he told, the Celtics fans that he was coming back and he actually didn't. So I don't know with Kyrie because I don't really think the Lakers really need him if they got uh, D'Angelo Russell. I yeah. think I think they're really good with him, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I think Kyrie will just come mess it up. 
Like, I mean, I, like, he, he's a good yeah. player, but, like, what they got going on, like, with D'Lo there, too, like, that commodity going into, like, the offseason, too, would be good for the Lakers. But, uh, yeah. you know, that wasn't, it was the only team that was, that was making some questionable decisions yesterday. Timberwolves got the tussling on the sideline, oh, man. man. Punching, punching walls, punching they were two. teammates, punching everybody but the other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rudy yeah. Gobert I mean, this, this thing, I mean, Rudy Gobert, it don't matter. You know, the funny thing, I think Kyle Anderson, I think he's French too. I think he's on the French national team too. So they so they actually know each other pretty well, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. So um, I'm pretty, you know, <laughs> which is crazy. But uh, yeah, man, the Timberwolves, you know, that's, that's, that's just – it's just one of them things where it's just like bad timing, bro. Like real, literally bad timing. Cool. Not saying that they would have made the playoffs as far as beating the Lakers or beating the next team if they were to lose to the Lakers, but it's just sad, bro. Uh, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Gobert just seems to be in problems every team that he's going in as far as with teammates mm-hmm. <laughs> everywhere. Like, bro. Where bro kind of bro started COVID in the NBA, now he's fighting with his teammates, man. Oh yeah, like bro, bro. Oh yeah, he did. He was. He in the headlines for the wrong reasons. Like, come on, man. This is it's always <laughs> something with Rudy Gobert. Like, I used to be like, dog. It, players be players really be going at Rudy Bear, like going on him, like on like social media, like interviews. I'm like, damn, what did he, what did he do to make them that mad, bro? But it's shit like this, like I can see. Yeah, that, I man. mean. Yeah, especially uh, you know for the COVID drink when he was right. he was rubbing the Mike Pauls, and then next thing you know he got sick, and then the whole oh, league shut down. down. You know he is he is a little he he seemed like a person that always misses like the first step type. Yeah, like he don't read the dude. room type. <laughs> like he's just awkward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man. He said, then Jaden McDaniels <laughs> fractured his hand. He might be out for the. Well, they 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 don't make the playoffs. He probably gonna be out for the season. He broke his he broke his hand punching the wall. Like, come. On. I mean, you might as well say he's out for the playoffs because even if the Timberwolves were to make it to the playoffs, they're not making it to the second yeah. round. I'm sorry. And even with Man, a fractured hand, you're not about to come hoop as a fractured hand after a week and a half, two weeks. Like, you yeah. done. You better you better hope they don't make that play because if they make the playoffs and he and they lose like small like a small thing where he could have helped that might be his that might be his time in uh Minnesota. but i mean this might be a hot take don't we can talk about it when we talk about the nba i'm gonna just hold it off on that oh, okay. go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> all right bet i'm gonna hold it off and then you know last <laughs> last not least talking about the lakers they'll most likely be playing the grizzlies i think they're gonna beat the Tim. Timberwolves today. I said my prediction early, but mm-hmm. I think so. And that likely a first round matchup with the Grizzlies. Steven Adams is out for that matchup. That's going to be big. Steven Adams brings a lot to that yeah, team. But also, that they is. just signed the G League MVP to a one to a contract for the rest of the season. Kenny Lofton, bro, came yeah. out shot yeah. forty two points, fourteen rebounds, one fifty three percent shooting. Like. I get, I get. It's the last season, game of the season. He's not really playing against nobody, but forty six and fourteen on your first game in the NBA period. That's yeah. something to come at. Like yeah. I can't, you can't, you can't say nothing about that. Because regardless of the fact, those are still Momentum. NBA hoopers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are, they are, and no one's saying he's going to be yeah. a walking bucket and, and he's going to be dropping like a dub every game. But if he can come up with a quick eight points. Four rebounds, a block, and a, like a charge or something. Those are solid mm-hmm. minutes to the point in which that you know that will continue to increase inside the playoffs. So, I mean, we'll see, man. Hopefully, uh, he does ball out. But uh, yeah, Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So one more thing too. Uh, how about Dame though? How about Ooh. Dame? A little saying that he's not really willing to uh, um, do a rebuild for the Portland Trailblazers. I mean, is that a potential trade request the day after uh, the NBA finals? I don't think, I don't know. I feel like that might be a get y'all shit together right now before this draft start, or then I'm really going to be like, get me a body here type. Cause like he, you don't really, you don't really hear him say, say something like that. Like usually he'll like, Oh no, I'm trying to be here. He's still saying that, but like you sense like, Portland needs to go make a trade for somebody. Like the way that Dallas made that trade for uh, Kyrie, 
it showed them like we trying to build mm-hmm. something with you. We trying to get you some help. It didn't work out, but he still got that idea that they trying to help him build something. Portland, they not doing that, bro. They got Jeremy Grant. He's good. Don't get me wrong. I rock with Jeremy Grant, but they traded for him. Yeah, like they traded yeah. for him, and and he and he did not want to resign back with him. Mm. I mean, as far as an extension. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. See, that's why. Get you got you got to get somebody else. Was he? I don't think was he all star. Jeremy Grant was this year. Nah, 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 I don't think he. He was. Yeah, he yeah. was all star, right? I think he was. Okay. I think he was. Yeah, yeah. But still, I think he was. You got to get, get somebody, yeah, or he he gone. He gotta go. Like I would you no, try he, to get I mean, you in it, here, but you gotta go now, bro. Yeah. It's one of those where is no one wants to go to Portland. People get traded to Portland. Yeah. You know, nobody's gonna say I'm so, going to Portland. This. When, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I I think uh, Dame is going to request a trade like right after around like draft time. He's just going to be like, "Fuck it, bro." Because number one, they are a small market, and I understand that he's loyal to the team, but they need to try to get some some out of it. You know, to the point in which that he can get traded somewhere. But I don't know. Um. All right, man. All right, man. So let's go right into this thing. The whole purpose of this podcast right now, we're doing a preview for the NBA playoffs playing right now. I, I I cannot wait. NBA, it starts on Tuesday night. And the way that it works, there are four teams as far as the seventh seed, eighth seed, ninth seed, and tenth seed from each conference. Uh, seven in the eighth seed will play each other. Winner will automatically play the second seed of their conference. And the loser between the seventh and eighth seed will play the winner between the ninth and 10th seed. And whoever wins between that plays the number one seed of their conference. So just going, just starting it off on Tuesday, we have the number eight seed in the Eastern conference. Atlanta Hawks are at the Miami heat. Now, between these two teams, uh, the season series is three. Uh, the Miami Heat have won three games, and the Atlanta Hawks have only beaten the Miami Heat this season one time. Last year, the Atlanta Hawks actually lost to the Miami Heat in the playoffs, uh, four one games to four. And, um, you know, Atlanta Hawks has had a lot going on this season as far as middle of the season coach change um the miami heat just has not been playing like they their offense is just terrible to be honest with you that's why they're they're really you know that's one of the teams that you still don't want to sleep on but you mm-hmm. kind of do want to sleep on um who you got winning that game man between the atlanta hawks and the miami heat uh tomorrow night on tuesday i'm i'm, I'm pretty invested in this game and you know that's my south celtics we the number two team so we played a winner this game i want the hawks to win but I think Miami's going to win. Like, like you said, Miami's offense is not Miami's not has not been Miami this season. But I don't, re, I don't think you really want to play a Jimmy Butler and Eric Spoelstra led team in the first round. That's tough. Regardless, regardless of the season, I think it's going to be a tough series. But I, obviously, I think we got it. But I'm, I'm taking the Heat. I'm taking the Heat tonight. It's at Miami Ooh. too, so yeah, I'm mm. definitely taking the Heat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, I don't know, man. Did you- it was just a couple of years ago when people were just all in on the Atlanta Hawks saying that they're going to be the team of the future. They got the same squad, to be honest with you, with a little sprinkle of new players in there. And um, who I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, is Ice Trey going to come out or is Jimmy Butler going to be on them or Jimmy? Jimmy on that. <laughs> Jimmy not going to give him no, not an inch of breathing room, bro. He's going to come out with the tone. Because, like, other than Trey Young, DeJounte, you know, like, who who else is there really? John Collins is tough, but there's uh, nobody else on there that I'm like, oh, he, he going to get you up. I'm like, nah, not really. That's why I want to play them. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm, I'm going to go upset. I'm going to have the Atlanta Hawks beating the Miami Heat. Uh, in this playoff game, uh, in this play-in, and they will be playing the 
Boston Celtics. So I'm going with the Atlanta Hawks. Fuck I, it. I hope you're right, my boy. I'm not even going to say it. I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I got the Atlanta Hawks. Tebow has the Miami Heat. So for Tebow, it will be the Miami Heat will be playing his Boston Celtics. Um, I will have the Atlanta Hawks playing the Boston Celtics in the first round based off my prediction. So I will have the Miami Heat will be playing the loser between my Chicago Bulls and the Toronto Raptors. Going in, we're going to take our flight to uh, La La Land. The Atlanta, I mean, the L.A. Lakers will be playing the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who you got winning in that? Oh, Minnesota Timberwolves have won the season series two games to one versus the L.A. Lakers. Who you got winning this playing game? The Lakers, because they, they're playing, obviously they got LeBron James, but they've been playing real much better since the trade deadline. Like those pieces they made are way, they're not the same Lakers team that they were at the beginning of the season. And also, like we just talked about earlier, Minnesota, they y'all got y'all got to get ready for LeBron and AD, and y'all worried about y'all fighting y'all teammates. Like, come on. I feel, in my opinion, Lakers already won, man. Lakers already got that game in the bag. I hope not. I hate the Lakers with a passion, but I hope. But I got, I got. I'm a realist. I'm a realist, man. I'm not. I'm not gonna go by my heart. I'm gonna go by my by my my knowledge. I'm gonna take the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, D'Lo's about to go off in this game playing Old against his two, old, I forgot about that. playing against his old. Squad. Um, I got definitely got the Lakers. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, I got the Lakers going far this year in the playoffs, but we can talk about that when we do our NBA, um, uh, preview episode coming to y'all next week. So I got the Lakers winning this game. I mean, this is nothing behind it unless AD gets hurt just for getting a rebound. A type of shit. Yeah. So I got LA. Okay. Um, Wednesday, a uh, Wednesday night. Now we heading over to the nine and ten seeds, and uh, the first game is my Chicago Bulls at the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors are two and one versus us in the regular season this year. Um, who you got, Tebow? I see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the bull. I'm gonna take the bull. I'm gonna be an ally. I'm like, I ain't gonna go against y'all. But I just feel like I feel like DeMar DeRozan back in Toronto yeah. to eliminate them out mm-hmm. the playoffs. He going he gonna want to go for their head. He gonna go for their head like off the yeah. tip. So I'm t- I'm gonna t- I'm gonna take the Bulls this year. I'm gonna take the Bulls this one. Yeah, yeah, same, uh, same here. I think um, the way that my Bulls have definitely been playing within ever since uh, we picked up Patrick uh, Beverly, which he really has put some dog in. Our team as far as defense, which we were already a top 10 defense. And now um, I can see it. Zach Levine will also have have to step up. Kobe White has really been performing better ever since the uh, trade deadline. So, um, yeah, I got my Bulls winning this game. Um, so then the Bulls in my list will be playing against the Miami Heat on that part. And for you, Tebow, you will have. Um, my Bulls playing against the Atlanta Hawks, but we can go back to that after um, we fly to the West. We got the Oklahoma City Thunder, which everyone is surprised this year. They got some, they got some dogs, young dogs on their team, and they got hella first round picks. We'll be playing at the New Orleans Pelicans. Pelicans have won the series, the season series, three games to one. Who you got winning this game? Hmm. You said the Pelicans won three one, right? Yeah, I'm taking. I'm gonna take the Thunder. Jesus, serious. I like. I like what they're doing over there. I'm taking Ooh. the Thunder. Like, I don't know. I feel like the Pelicans too inconsistent for me. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get with them. You might get them for a couple of games, but then after a while, so I'm. I'm taking OKC. I like Shy. Shy is killing this year. That's my most improved player of the year. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Give me. Give me. Give me. The, give me the Thunder. Okay, Thunder. Now, um, is Zion coming nah, back for this out. game? Mm. Mm. Boy, we can't get him. I'm gonna say Pelicans. I'm gonna say Pelicans just because um, Thunder is still gonna have a lottery pick, and then their squad is just gonna be better. I just want them to actually like get better. So that's why I'm picking. 
of the Pelicans. So I got the Pelicans. You got OKC. Now, um, going back to the final matchup between the um, – I got my Chicago Bulls. We'll be playing against the Miami Heat. And, Tebow, you got my Chicago Bulls playing against the Atlanta Hawks. Who do you have winning in your matchup? No, give me – I would take the Chicago Bulls over the Hawks. Yeah. I would, uh, take the, I would take the Bulls over the Hawks. Now – yeah, well, the Hawks been spanking us this year. Um, let me say, for me, I would definitely um, have the Miami Heat beating us. Uh, I definitely don't want to see my Bulls playing against the Milwaukee Bucks. I would rather see the Miami Heat playing against the Milwaukee Bucks. They can get two games out of the Bucks. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't have my Chicago Bulls making the playoffs. Hopefully, they don't. Even though I do want them to, I don't want them playing the Bucks and. If my Bulls happen to get a top pick, top four pick, we get to keep our first round pick this year or else anything outside of the top four will go to the Orlando Magics for the Vucevic trade we did a couple of years ago. All right. So uh, next, we got, uh, Tebow, you got the Oklahoma City Thunder. You got them playing against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I have the New Orleans Pelicans playing against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who do you have winning in your matchup? Mm, that OKC versus Timberwolves give me ah, that's tough. I'm gonna take I'll take the Timberwolves over OKC just because the veteran presence. Like they got mm. they got more veterans okay. over there. Cat been in there a couple times. Rudy and and you know like I'll just I think they're they're mm, yeah. Give me give me the Timberwolves. Give me the Timberwolves. Yeah, yeah. So for uh, for mine, I got Timberwolves playing against the Pelicans. I got the Timberwolves going in um, as well, being the eighth seed, playing against the Denver Nuggets. And so let me just sum everything up. So right now, Tebow has the Miami Heat playing against the Boston Celtics, and then he has the Chicago Bulls playing against the Milwaukee Bucks. Um. And then you have the L.A. Lakers playing against the Memphis Grizzlies. And you got the Minnesota Timberwolves playing against the Denver Nuggets. For me, I got the Atlanta Hawks playing against the Boston Celtics. uh, Miami Heat playing against the Milwaukee Bucks. I got L.A. Lakers playing against the Memphis Grizzlies. And the Minnesota Timberwolves playing against the Denver Nuggets. And my hot take that I was saying, I actually think that the Minnesota Timberwolves can beat the Denver Nuggets. I actually think that they can beat them. I don't know about that. I'm telling you, because, yo, Denver is not that nice, bro. Denver is not that nice. To me, I watched them. I watched watched them a couple of times this year. Ah, I just don't think that because their weakness is the paint. And when it comes down to the Minnesota Timberwolves, they got two big men who, I mean, well, Rudy Gobert probably is going to go down the middle as much. But if he does, if he gets rebounds and things like that, I. and then they got Cat, and then they got Ant. Like, mm-hmm. I, think, I think if there was an upset in the first round, I got the Minnesota Timberwolves beating the Denver Nuggets. Mm. I may I may be talking on my ass, but if I'm not talking on my ass, you know where you heard it first. Hey, you know what I mean? They beat them, bro. <laughs> they beat them. I'm coming on here for this show first and congratulating you myself, man. Hey, um, yeah, I probably should, I probably should bet on that, but I'm not in the States, I so I can't you, even do that you. shit. So <laughs> all right. So just to sum it up for the rest of the playoffs, the uh, uh, official games right now, we got the Sacramento Kings playing against the Golden State Warriors, which is going to be a good one. We got the uh, Phoenix Suns playing against the L.A. Clippers. That one's going to be a good one, too. Uh, Philadelphia 76ers playing against the Brooklyn Nets. And then we got the Cleveland Cavaliers playing against the New York That's Knicks. Gonna be the that best rounds series. up the rest of the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely re-watching all those um the Cavs versus the Knicks games. But, man, outside of that, man, I think we are done. Is there anything you want to say before we say bye-bye to our fans listening and man, watching us? tune into the next episode, man, that playoff preview. You heard it. My man just said, 
Temple was might beat the Nuggets. You, you're not going to want to miss the next episode, man. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like, like I, yeah, I think that. So, uh, once again, uh, since you're on YouTube watching us, you can like and subscribe. Everything is on the bottom of the screen right now to follow ourselves. This is episode 101, Tebow and Snipes KB, Sports State of Mind podcast, and we are out. <laughs>